Lady Fatima to Zera, peace be upon her. Known as the Lady of Light and the mother of her father, Fatima was the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him and his family. Respected and loved across the Muslim world, she symbolizes purity, faith, and resilience. Let's explore her story through various phases, drawing insights from both Sunni and Shia sources to illuminate the impact of her life. Fatima al-Zahra was born around 605 CE in Mecca on the 20th Jamadi U.S. Sani during a time of great social unrest. Her mother was Lady Khadija, a woman of immense virtue and the Prophet's first and most loyal supporter. Born during a period when her father faced persecution for spreading the message of Islam, in Sunni sources, including Sahih al-Bukhari, she is remembered as the beloved daughter of the Prophet. In Shia traditions, her birth holds significant spiritual meaning, seen as a symbol of purity, echoing the Quranic verse that describes the Prophet's family as divinely purified, Quran 33, 33. Allah only desires to remove impurity from you, O people of the house, and to purify you thoroughly. Fatima grew up witnessing the challenges of the early Muslim community. Even as a young child, she showed deep compassion and support for her father, comforting him when he was mistreated. Her kindness, coupled with a keen sense of justice, made her wise beyond her years. In 622 CE, the Prophet and his followers migrated to Medina to establish a new Muslim community. Fatima continued to be a source of strength, displaying a remarkable combination of gentleness and resolve. Around the age of 18, Fatima married Ali ibn Abi Talib, the Prophet's cousin and one of the earliest Muslims. Sunni and Shia sources alike celebrate this marriage. In Sunni traditions, such as Sunan ibn Majah, it is seen as an ideal union blessed by the Prophet. In Shia texts like Bihar al-Anwar, their marriage represents a spiritual bond, symbolizing the unity of two exceptional souls committed to Islam. Together, they had two sons, Hassan and Hussein, and two daughters, Zainab and Umm Kulthum. Fatima's home became a sanctuary of piety and learning, where her children were raised with values of compassion, bravery, and devotion. On the return journey from the Prophet's final pilgrimage in 632 CE, he stopped at a place called Ghadir Qum on the 18th of Zilhaj, where he delivered a significant sermon. In this sermon, according to both Sunni and Shia sources, the Prophet held Ali's hand and declared, For whoever I am his mala, Ali is his mala. The Arabic word mala has various meanings, and interpretations of this statement have differed. In Sunni interpretations, such as those in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Tirmidhi, the statement emphasizes Ali's close companionship and honor among the early Muslims. Shia traditions, however, see Ghadir as the Prophet's appointment of Ali as his successor in both spiritual and temporal leadership. This event, recorded in texts like Al-Ghadir by Alama Amini, serves as a foundational basis for the Shia belief in Ali's unique role. In his final days, last of the month, Safar Prophet Muhammad was gravely ill, and his family, especially Fatima and Ali, attended to him with deep love and care. According to various narrations in both Sunni and Shia sources, the Prophet expressed a desire to leave written instructions for the community, sometimes referred to as his last will. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it's recorded that the Prophet asked for writing materials, but there was disagreement among those present. Some companions believed his words were sufficient, while others feared it might lead to division. In Shia sources, such as Kitab al-Irshad, it suggested that this was a missed opportunity to formalize the leadership role of Ali. This moment is remembered by Shia Muslims as an unfulfilled wish of the Prophet to leave a written guide. 28th of Safar, Prophet passed away. Following the Prophet's passing, grief and uncertainty enveloped the Muslim community. While his family prepared for his funeral, a group of companions gathered at Saqifa to discuss the future leadership of the Muslim community. This meeting resulted in the selection of Abu Bakr as the first caliph. In Sunni tradition, Saqifa is seen as a practical solution to preserve the unity of the community, as detailed in Sahih al-Bukhari. However, Shia sources, including al-Kafi, reflect Fatima's sorrow, feeling that her husband, Ali, who had been so close to the Prophet, was overlooked. This decision was a significant point of divergence between Sunni and Shia Muslims, marking the beginning of differences in leadership beliefs. Amid the political shifts, Fatima sought to secure her inheritance of Fadak, a property granted to her by the Prophet. However, her claim was denied by Abu Bakr, 
who cited that prophets do not leave material inheritance based on his interpretation of a hadith. Sunni sources, such as Sahih Muslim, highlight the legal perspective of this ruling, whereas Shia texts, like Bihar al-Anwar, interpret this denial as part of a broader disregard for her family's rights. Fatima's claim to Fadak became a deeply emotional issue for her, symbolizing the struggles she and her family faced in the wake of the Prophet's passing. After the passing of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tension and uncertainty filled Medina. Ali, Fatima's husband, did not pledge allegiance immediately to the newly appointed caliph, choosing instead to grieve in the privacy of his home with his family. In Shia tradition, it's believed that a group of men seeking Ali's allegiance arrived at their doorstep demanding entry. As the men outside grew impatient, Lady Fatima, carrying the grief of her father's passing and the weight of her family's honor, came forward to speak on behalf of her household. She called out to them, reminding them that this was the house of the Prophet, a sanctuary of purity. Her voice is steady yet filled with emotion, echoing with a tone of dignity and pleading. This is the house of the Prophet's family. Respect its sanctity. Leave us to our grief. But the response she received was silence, followed by an act that would forever leave its mark on history. The men set fire to the door, pushing it inward. In Shia sources, such as Kitab al-Irshad, it's recounted that as the door was forced open, it struck Lady Fatima, pinning her between the burning wood and the wall. Shia historians recount that Lady Fatima was injured severely in this incident, sustaining injuries that would contribute to her passing only weeks later. Her unborn child, Muhsin, was lost that day, a loss that deepened her sorrow and the sorrow of those who loved her. This tragic moment is remembered by Shia Muslims as a profound injustice, symbolizing the trials that the Prophet's family endured. For them, it is a time of solemn remembrance, a time to reflect on her endurance, her courage, and her unwavering faith, even as she faced the greatest of sorrows. Sunni sources do not mention specific details of harm, but emphasize her spirituality and patience during her final days. Fatima al-Zahra passed away only three to four months after the Prophet's death, her heart burdened by sorrow. Sunni sources record her last days with respect and reverence, highlighting her quiet endurance. In Shia tradition, she is mourned as a symbol of resistance and justice, and her pain and sacrifices are commemorated annually. Before she passed, Fatima requested a private burial. According to Shia and some Sunni references, she was Lady Fatima was displeased with Hazrat Abu Bakr desiring a humble and hidden resting place. To this day, her grave remains unmarked, a poignant symbol of her life and her struggles. Lady Fatima's life and legacy continue to inspire Muslims of all backgrounds. Sunni Muslims regard her as one of the most virtuous women in Islam, alongside Maryam, Mary, Asiya, and Khadija. Shia Muslims honor her with special commemorations, remembering her resilience and the sacrifices of her family. Her virtues are reflected in the reverence with which Muslims approach her life. Prophet Muhammad himself said, Fatima is a part of me. Whatever displeases her, displeases me. This hadith, found in both Sunni, Sahih al-Bukhari, and Shia, Bihar al-Anwar sources, signifies her special position in the Prophet's heart and the respect owed to her. Lady Fatima al-Zahra's legacy is a guiding light, her life a message of faith, patience, and resilience. Her story reminds us that true strength lies in faith, humility, and the courage to stand for justice, even in times of adversity. May her life continue to inspire compassion, unity, and devotion to the values she embodied. Fatima al-Zahra, Lady of Light, Lady of Heaven, and a timeless symbol of grace.